In all of American culture, there are three great debates. Coke or Pepsi, Chevy or Ford, Ginger or Mary Ann. <laughs> and next to me is Mary Ann. Uh, is Dawn, it Coca-Cola, actually? No, that's, well, <laughs> poor thing, Dawn Wells is under the weather today. I can't believe she still made time for us, and I apologize for taking a few minutes of your time. You really need to go and lay down and rest, but thanks for doing this. That's my pleasure. Um, you are a real cowgirl. It's not just because you dress this way. You, you're born in Reno, Nevada, and... Uh, your great-grandfather was a uh, stagecoach driver, so you came by this honestly. I did. I'm a fourth-generation Nevadan. My great-great-grandfather drove stagecoach during the gold rush. I have cousins that are bronco riders and rodeo riders, and I'm uh, not quite a cowgirl because my knees dislocate, but I've ridden a lot. But when your knees were younger? Well, they were worse when I was in the sixth grade. Really? They're better now. <laughs> uh, I was worse when I was in sixth grade, but we don't want to go into that. <laughs> let's not. Uh, now, let's talk about the TV westerns, because you did a lot of things for Warner Brothers and some other uh, uh, TV westerns. You were just great in those. Uh, did you like doing TV westerns? Oh, I loved it. I really did. And I, I sort of, you know, in Hollywood, they always tell you don't lie about what you can do. And they said to me one day, I don't know, it was a Wells Cargo or Fargo or something, and said, can you drive a buckboard? Of course I can drive a buckboard. <laughs> How hard is that? And well, what they, happened? Well, it ran away with me, almost turned me over. I was with an actor, Abraham Safar, who was about 80. Yeah. The two of us in the buckboard. Poor they, man. They had to get horses and capture us and bring us back. So I uh, learned a lesson real quick. That's <laughs> horrible. But but uh, you figured since your great-grandfather could do it, you could do it. Heck yes. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, let's jump ahead because, uh, you know, when you got the part of Marianne in Gilligan's Island, um, it wasn't just a done deal. And you and I talked over the phone for the newspaper article we were doing. Uh, you're, I guess, the last one cast, basically, in the in the yeah. in the series, and almost not so. I think you and your husband were in the room with Sherwood Schwartz, and he was just going to maybe let you come back another day, and then your husband stepped up to the plate. What happened? Well, actually, uh, I had a couple of interviews with Mr. Schwartz, and we sort of were quipping back and forth, kind of a little sense of humor, and then they were looking to cast and to test, and when they called. Um, Sherwood Schwartz said that I was too smart to play Marianne, and my husband said, well, she could act dumb if Marianne's supposed to be dumb, and Marianne <laughs> wasn't dumb. supposed to be dumb. Uh, and if you want to test her, test her now, don't wait. So I had maybe blown the whole thing. He might have said, okay, never mind. Yeah. But they tested me, and I tested for about a week, about 350 girls. You're matching you up, who's the gingers, who's the professors, and see right, the chemistry. Right. And at the very last day of the testing, it was on a Thursday afternoon, Raquel Welch walked in to test for Marianne. That's I thought, right. well, that's the end of that. Although, she'd have been a better ginger, wouldn't she? She would have been a, a better ginger. Than a Marianne. I don't mean better than Tina, but yeah. yeah. And uh, now, what about, uh, you know, I hate to ask this. We talked about it on the phone, but I, I'm going to bring it up anyway. Shouldn't there, I'm not talking in real life, but in the characters, yeah. shouldn't Marianne and, and the professor have... Uh, had some kind of physical relation. Shouldn't Hooked that, up, is that what you're going to yes, say? Yes, I think that Hooked was. Hooked up? I think so. But no. they didn't. Why, did, no. why didn't they? Nobody could do anything. You couldn't show my navel. Tina couldn't show her cleavage. There was no kissing that went on. Twin beds for the howls. It was back in the time when things were pretty nice and easy and good. And <laughs> that, same at my house now. <laughs> they, <laughs> They're they, not all living together like they would be right now. You yeah, know? yeah, everybody would be. There'd That's be a right. lot of that stuff going on. Yeah, there because be. if you were ginger kiss somebody back then, they would somebody would faint or be knocked out or something. Yeah. They would have to have yeah. some consequence to it. Uh, you've done a lot of stage plays and uh, did one uh, and he did a film recently with our friend Lee Merriweather. Yes. So you're pretty busy. What are you up to these I days? I am so busy. I'm busier than I ever been in the whole life. I think. Well, right now I'm. I, I was going to have a week off, but I'm. Now going back into Love, Loss, and What I Wore, the wonderful uh, Nora Ephron and Delia Ephron's play. Right. Um, I'm going into San Jose on Tuesday to do that, and I'll be through the end of July, and August 11th, I start rehearsal for Lion in Winter with... Lion in Winter? Who Andy are you doing Prine? that with? Andy Prine. You know yes, I mean? yes, yes. Andy's my Henry. He did some TV westerns, too, yeah. and some movie westerns. And some movie westerns. We've worked together quite a bit. I hadn't wow. seen him in years. We were doing some kind of a thing for a Blu-ray DVD for Town the Dreaded Sundown, Yeah. and I said, Andy, how would you like to be my Henry? So the two of us now said yes, and we're doing that through September. Well, I don't want to keep you long because uh, I know your voice is, is having a rough time. And, uh, You're but bored I appreciate already? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'd, I'd like to go on a three-hour tour with you. All right. <laughs>
But I think I think I've solved for the folks at home the uh, the debate of Ginger or Mary Ann. My vote goes to Mary Ann. I'll be sure. And uh, and will always go to Mary Ann. And she's also a great cook. And if you can go on on eBay and some of these things, you can still find the cookbook that she wrote, which were a lot of your mom's recipes. Yes, three generations. And your grandmother's. Yeah, two, both my grandmothers and my mother. And my mother at ninety one wrote all the recipes by hand. So that wasn't a fake thing. Those no, were real no. recipes yeah. from your family. Mm -hmm. And your mom got a kick out of that book, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's great. I have a copy at home. And, uh, and it's so good food. And it's not hard. It's not it is this good. gourmet stuff that you have to take days to fix. And, and look on the internet because they, they still have it on eBay and some places like that and get it. And uh, and also uh, keep up with where Marianne and uh, Dawn Wells, the alter ego, are doing. And good luck with the play. Thank you. And get well. I'm glad you're better. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I had laryngitis not long ago. It cleared up because I got excited knowing I was going to be with you. <coughs> Me too. I'm choked up again.